working more with the bit booster which is this hat shield for the micro bit gets to get access to the pins easier potentiometer is a variable resistor it's a dial and then as you go from one part one side to the other clockwise counterclockwise kind of thing you're changing the resistance that is going through it the values that we read tend to be from 0 to 10 23 power of 2 kind of thing there are three prongs on them the middle prong is always the signal the pin that we're sending into and then the other two are power and ground now it doesn't matter which one you hook the power and ground what's going to happen is the the, the number is going to flip if I would go all the way to the right all the way clockwise for high if I flip my wires around all the way clockwise would then be low so I set up this little program here's another potentiometer uh, they all have different values of resistance so if your circuit needs certain amount of resistance for them you got to pay attention to which ones you're buying I'm just using it to input a number so zero would be on one one turn all the way one direction 1023 all the way another I have hooked it up to pin three pin three is this little green strip here it's called the extra pins on the bit booster I've could have plugged it into other pins but those are designed to direct run servos and neo pixels and motors and I'm gonna want to run them so why would I take them up with an input so I'm going to use my 3 4 9 and 10 as inputs so now I just have a simple program on it let's turn it there is all the way counterclockwise and then I have it set that at a certain number change to that color and that at another number change to green just a simple code just to show that it works again I had to hook power ground and signal now one thing you're gonna have to do because of the pins on the micro bit pin 3 is part of the um, the 5x5 array so it's pin 4 so it's pin 9 so it's pin 10 if you look at any pin out uh, for the micro bit so you have to disable the LED array otherwise you're not going to get valid readings so here is the code for it again as a reminder one I set the dial I created a variable called dial uh, and I set it to analog read pin that the that's just one of the blocks under pins. I was just initializing it. I don't have to do it there. As you see in my forever, um, it's in my forever because I want to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, but I do have to initialize a strip of NeoPixels because I've got NeoPixels. So I have to tell some NeoPixels. Um, I changed the brightness down to 100 because 255 is really bright. And then here's the key thing. Um, I have to go into the uh, LED blocks and grab the LED enable false to shut off uh, those pins to the LED array so I can use those pins. Again, pin 3, 4, 9, and 10 are part of the LED array. And then my forever, uh, set the dial to whatever reading comes through analog pin 3. And then my if statements, again, this is the logic that you've got to play with for whatever you want to do. I did a simple one if the dial is less than 100, show the strip to be colored red. Else if the dial is greater than 500, show it to be green. Else, which is the in-between kind of thing, you know, if it's not below, if it's not above, then just show it to be purple. There's the potentiometer, again, wired to pins three, and the left two are power and ground. Let me get a close up of the potentiometer. The middle one is always the signal. That's key. And again, the green block there is where the extra pins are.